This is the Dendrones OZR 5. Dan Jones released something that can transform. You see this frame, you can put on a top plate and you can get it as low as 225 grams, or you can essentially add the brace protection, motor protection that can go on each individual corner separately, carbon fiber nylon pod, a TPU fin, and close all of your video system and electronics in a suit of armor. And that still lets me be about 45 grams lighter than my open racer build. Now, I also have a special treat for you guys. I was able to get Din from Din Drones as well as his engineer for this design. He goes by the name of Freelo. The original idea was just to make the lightest, fastest frame possible. We started with like a 38 gram, super light, very breakable, very destructible frame, that, but it was pretty quick. So and as we started uh, test flying it more, we just, as things would break consistently, we would just start adding material where the breaks were occurring until we got to kind of a good happy medium. On the other side, if you want uh, more protection during practice, you can enhance it with braces, motor protection, and an instrument. I'm trying to kill that quad for quite some time. I think you you shared it off just I, 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 today. Like pod and like the, the, the motor protection is removable. So you, it says optional if you want to run it. Carbon fiber, nylon, 3D printed. And the nice thing is that they, they break right at about the point where you damage the motor. So they're like, it's like an impact structure, right? So it, it takes the hit before the, like I just did this one and the motor's like completely, total, totally fine. If you want it light, you don't need to run them. And then you also don't have the problem where you start delamming the arms for hitting the end of them. What happens on an open racer after a while is crash, crash, crash. You end up grinding away the edges of those arms. You end up delaminating them. And even an arm that's pretty stiff, you want to replace it because it's just going to end up getting worse and worse. You don't have to do that with this type of a design. You just print yourself another one of these little arm protection thingies, swap it out with two screws, and you're good to go. The OZR also uses this really beefy standoffs. Compared to a regular knurled standoff, you should be able to avoid this problem where it starts to strip out and you get sort of a loose butthole effect, which is just going to give you nothing but shit. Can you show the quad that actually exploded? It breaks and then you replace it with a new one, but you save electronics, right? Yeah, like we haven't had, nobody's damaged any electronics with this pod. This is like the third one that's broken. The arms have these like trusses that come off. See how it lines up? And there's a TPU dampener inside, which is a big, big thing, right? You play with the height of the uh, grommets, right? And then you put your ESC, FC, whatever, everything yeah. on it. But then you, do, you don't use any nuts because like then you unscrew this long screw, right? And then you can swap an arm, right? And then uh, here there are like little dampeners. You see the white little dampener? There's no the stack nuts. You just put the pot on and it holds the top of the stack on. So I use like all eight millimeter it gummies. It goes all the way through to the top. All the way to the yeah. top. It doesn't actually even go all the way through the top gummy. It just goes through the board. And then everything else is just squished, squished all the way down. That means that it's super quick to do a field repair. All you do is remove the four screws for the top plate of the pod. And you have instant access to all three layers. That has been super convenient in doing field repairs. The mid plate's super minimal. It's just a X basically. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, then you've got all the space to put your receiver and the cap. This is all open. So you can fit most big ESCs. Braces is a cool thing. Uh, we put them on the sides or the front. I run one quad brace in the front yeah. and nothing on the back. Brace itself is what? Less than two grams, right? But it adds a hell ton of stiffness. Plus it protects the camera. I mean, it's pretty hard to destroy it in this pod. It went from being like, if you had one of those crashes, you almost guaranteed you're going to get the whole pancake thing and kill something to now I'd say it's maybe 50% less chance. Or, and it's and it's only five grams heavier than a traditional standoff, so just straight up I mean, that's weight. the thing, like, we're waiting for Freedom Spec, and everyone else is putting, like, all these weights, and like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over, <laughs> like, way over. <laughs> Tuning, right? Like how you said, that that's it's life smooth as butter. This year's International Open, what I found was I could actually put down pretty close to the times that I wanted on the tracks if I could stay calm. You see, the weight wasn't the limiting factor. It was my own nerves, but I actually made it into the next 32. I qualified 73rd, just outside of that top 64 World Cup but it's okay. I just wanted to get into one of those two brackets so that I got one extra race on Saturday of the event. And I did, and I made it all the way into finals. Now there's a couple of reasons why this ended up happening, but one of them was because my build was about 60 to 70 grams. Whoa, this is heavy. 
than a lot of the other people competing that day. So in my final round, I started pushing. I got to a point in the race where I had crashed and started to fall behind, but I think I could have pushed myself up into a podium position, maybe even as high as P2, P3, or P4. But what happened was my open racer being so heavy, pushing so hard, being able, be, having to fly with a bent prop after a crash meant that I was using up the battery faster than normal. And I fell out of the air in the last 200 meters of the track, right at the end, right before that final turn into the finish gate. And that was so demoralizing. Now I'm still pretty happy with the fact that I ended up finishing P6 overall in that next 32 bracket. But what would have happened if I had 50 grams lighter of a build? Would I have had that extra six seconds of flight time to get me across the finish line? I think I would have. And this addresses a lot of the needs that I have. Being lighter, but also being protected so that I don't have to worry about replacing my electronics. I don't have to worry about being on the bench. One unique design aspect is that the turtle mode fin actually faces forward and it's pretty thick, meaning that if you hit a tree or a gate or something head on, that's gonna absorb the impact before you get to that HD zero 90 Hertz camera. This is a good compromise. This ends up being about 40 to 45 grams lighter than my open racer build. I did do a lot of weight reduction techniques on this build. One, I used aluminum screws on all four corners. That saves about six grams. Two, I used very short wires I usually end up leaving a little bit of long wires. I used a short pigtail that saves a lot of grams and I could do similar stuff on my open racer. In fact, Lamone ends up building his open racers, usually a good 20, 25 grams lighter than me. So it's not like the open racer is just a heavy pig, but this allows me to get that weight savings a little bit nicer and it offers a lot of quality of life things. So I'm gonna go ahead and build up a second one and I'm gonna keep an open racer for the night spot for sure. My background is actually from flying airplanes. So I used to be an aerobatic pilot. Uh, flew air shows and competitions, and then I got involved with Red Bull Air Race, so chief engineer for a Red Bull Air Racing team and tactician, which is still what I do full time now. I got into drone racing a couple of years ago, and I love it. So you're an actual engineering aircraft, not just a hobbyist. Like Honestly, starting from scratch, you don't know what you don't know. So the, there's definitely a big learning curve anytime you're designing something new. I also think that the racing frames have gotten very refined in the last two or three years, like they've sort of settled on similar solutions. Although there's a lot of really cool, interesting new stuff going on right now, which is really exciting. So I really enjoy that part. I like having some you know, development going on and trying to find where to get the advantages and, and making the equipment better. So I, I really like it. I love seeing new type of design things in FPV. It's always been my favorite. So how does this thing fly? After loading up the preset that the team made, this thing is probably the best flying quad that I've ever flown. I'm not just talking about the best racing quad, but just the best quad, period. It was so smooth in the air, like so little bit of jitter or wobbling, like it was startling, the difference. Now, to be fair, I'm not a very good judge of that. I often beat my quads to heck. They've all been at the night spot 50 to 100 times. So Lamone was pointing out that I'm used to janked up motors, bent up props, wobbly arms, and other things that cause my quads to fly less than perfectly. I prioritize stick time over tuning, and I'm just lazy enough to where I'm just gonna load a karate preset and go about my day. But the fact that these guys make it easy, you just click it, load it, it's done, and it's tuned perfectly for the setup, just takes all the guesswork out of it. So if you want a nice, flying quad and you don't want to have to do the work this is a really good option so this is johnny five and he just built this uh, fancy super light din drones racing drone and then he put 30 grams of battery protection on it how do you explain that i gotta save the battery because going slower is when you have no more batteries left and you kill the bull that's the slowest come on <laughs> <laughs> See, he designed this lipo coffin. It's on the Open Racer GitHub. Nice spot, we would kill quite a few batteries. And when you're flying these Tattoo 5.0s, you don't want to go killing these expensive batteries. Oh, 
it's just such a shame when they die. So then sprung into action and he actually made this super light battery protector. I'll leave the link to this if you want to print this out as well. You just stick it onto your battery just like that and you get corner, front, and side protection and there's a little slot for your battery strap to hold it on there. Less than five grams in TPU. So thanks to Din and Ben for letting me check out their creation. You know, Din Jones has been bringing unique products to the market for several years. The Typhon, the Octoferry. I was looking for some B-roll footage for this video and I found that old footage I collected of interviewing Din and the Octoferry back in Costa Rica, the same event where I did that Minchan video and Minchan flew that thing and it was one of the most scary experiences of my life. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, this So how I have, fast is it? I flew X-Class quads and I always have X-Class quads with the super huge props. This, I feel like this thing is way faster than X-Class. It flies like a five inch, doesn't it? Yeah. Because he's like line of sighting this giant quad that was so freakishly loud and fast. And if you want to go check out his battery box, he makes those bespoke field charging solutions. And guess what, guys? That can actually go onto a flight. What do you think in the comments, guys? What frame are you racing with? I rarely change frames and setups that I use for racing. Yes, I do cover a lot of stuff. I fly a lot of stuff. I try a lot of stuff. I like a lot of stuff. But you know what is better than liking something? Being used to something and putting a thousand packs on something, having every intimate knowledge of how it's gonna fly, how it's gonna crash, how it's gonna repair. And that's why I've been doing Open Racer for so long. And I still think that for a lot of people, it is a great option, especially beginners. But what I've been searching for is some middle ground between the ultra, ultra, ultra light things like the Kronos and the new 5.3 unibody release that just came out. And this is that intersection of this. And I really like that if you do want to go all the way light, bring it down to 225 grams, you can do it with the same frame by just swapping the top plate, taking the motor protection and the brace off and boom, stripping off 50 grams as it sits now with a strap with the battery protection, with the front brace, with the pod and the TPU and everything else, this is sitting at about 276 grams. So much, much lighter, about 46 grams weight savings over my open racer night spot build. And that's just about perfect for me. Fucking bugs are eating my legs. <laughs> <laughs>